Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد رسوله. praises for Allah and I say again Alhamdulillah the praises for Allah and I witness that nothing's worthy of worship besides Allah he's one and alone and he has no associate or partner and I witness that Muhammad is his slave servant and his messenger the prayers and peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we pray the prayers and peace be upon his family, his his uh, descendants, the companions, and the righteous servants all. And once again, assalamu alaikum. Today, uh, I wish to speak to you. on the subject of paying attention. Not by virtue of me wanting you to hear me, <laughs> but as a reminder from God's guidance that we need to pay attention. And this is uh, a part of the design of God, part of the, the, the ta'id of God. Uh, I was reflecting on the the condition of my salat and that we all we experience as human beings we experience our attention being distracted even when we're talking with God and uh, I want to reference these brief remarks from the Quran you know the surah the, the, the surah called the, the daybreak the dawn and uh, it reads, "Awudu bilai min al-shaytan al-rajim." "Qul awudu bi Rabbi al-Falak, min shari ma qalak, wa min shari ghasiki nithabqan, wa min shari nafathati fi al-ark, wa min shari hasidin itha hasad." And the the rendering. Uh, I'm not sure how the, the, the trans, translate. This is not Yusuf Ali. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak from the evil of what he has created, from the evil of darkness as it descends, from the evil of those who blow on knots and from the evil of the envier when he envies us. Uh, housekeeping note, please put your phones on mute <laughs> or vi vibra vibrate, uh, I should say vibrate or turn them off. I've got mine turned off. And, um, I want to take my time, but I don't want to be too timely to, 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 to extend the time. So um, let me make this this note, this observation, my paying attention. Um, we're sitting in a, a place of, of sajda, a, a musala, a place of, of prayer. 
we in the upper room. <laughs> we in the upper room above a business establishment. That's something that we shouldn't take no, take lightly. For Negroes, ex-Negroes, I should say, we shouldn't take that lightly. That's that's very significant. And uh, I thank Allah for for being uh, able to see that we are in a, in a situation where Salat is above business, but they're, they're connected, they're very closely connected. And this Quran that we reference in our opening, opening remarks is the context for our lives as Muslims. And then we become believers, we become convicted. We come also to a point, mashallah, by Allah's permission, as, as, as he wills, come to a point of yaqeen, a certainty in our belief, no doubt, no, no doubt at all. And so again, the Quran is the proper context for our life, and as people who have not had our life in our own hands, and as people, African Americans, we also have had extracted from us a appreciation for being genuine. Have been, having, you know, we, we have had as a group a issue of reaching out, snatching up identity. But Allah comes with the Quran and the Uswa of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. God comes with guidance, clear, and a balanced character, a balanced makeup, human makeup, most excellent, all praises due to God. And pointing the way and the pattern for us to develop our excellence as human beings, all praises due to Allah. We have Allah's Sunnah. There's nowhere in the Quran where God Most High in this guidance that is for now and forever more. This Quran, Quran al Karim, bountiful, bountiful, noble presentation, respectful of our humanity. This Quran tells us of God's Sunnah, His way, His pattern. But it, it doesn't mention Muhammad's pattern, it mentions Muhammad's uswa. It, it mentions a pattern, but not in the same language as sunnah. There's no sunnah of Muhammad. Muhammad's sunnah is the sunnah of Allah. And he expresses it through his uswa, through a character that is most balanced and most excellent. And it acknowledges to us Salah, as well as productivity. We see this in the life pattern of Muhammad. He was a businessman. This is unique, 21st century reality. 21st century reality for former coom, shines, and niggas, African Americans now, respectfully. This reality, we have one of productivity being sent to us in the long line of, of, of God's progressing his message for the human life, for the human family. Progressing that message with Muhammad, praise and peace be upon him, being the last. al Falah. We read that we are to say this is a command. So this is not just for us to read or recite, but it's for us to make expression. For me, I started with myself. Every time I read say and found out what it meant that it was a command of God, I said, okay, I'm going to first start with myself. This will tell you don't talk to yourself. You know, they connect talking to yourself with being mentally unbalanced. But those who understand more about the human nature than we do, 
they do communicate with themselves. And again, I say again, there are those who know more about us than we know about ourselves. The cultural trends, the cultural environment that we live and move through daily was not put together by happenstance, by accident. It was scientifically put together to get into our heads and our hearts and then get into our pocketbook. Whether that pocketbook have dollars in it or just productivity, we got potential for productivity, the potential ability to make some money. And if we don't know how to make it for ourselves, somebody will hook you up and you will be making money for them. They say, I got the hook up and they will hook you up. We mentioned the we mentioned the the context <coughs> and follow the breaking of the dawn. And as the dawn breaks, we begin to see a little clearer. The night fades away gradually, and we begin to see a little clearer. And I advise you as well as I advise <coughs> myself to take the guidance of God personal. In our deen, we say, Allahu Rabbi, that is the God, is my Rob, personal, my Lord. We say, Muhammad, Nabi, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he is my Nabi, my prophet, not my messenger, no, he's Allah's messenger, but he's my prophet. It's very personal. We say, al Quran, Kitabi, the Quran, the guidance of God is my book. It's personal. And again we say al qabu the Kaaba is my orientation. That's 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 the meaning. Arabic is not my language and especially Quranic Arabic is not my tongue, <laughs> so pardon me, my nose. So th this is another context in this presentation that this guidance that we're referencing, this al-fala, is personal. And each and every one of us, the Quran, the guidance meets us where we are. It doesn't require of us to come at it with a particular uh, bringing. Bring what you got to the Quran and it will give you more if you come sincerely, if you come straight. But if you come crooked, it's gonna give you what's gonna keep you crooked. It's, 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 very, it's, it's very clear because God expresses, expresses in his illustrations throughout the Quran, telling us about our condition as human beings, telling us about in the illustrations of those before us, but showing us the common condition. And I, I, I personally made a decision that I was going to be open to the Quran. So when I read about things that were not so favorable, I started with myself. I wasn't looking for hypocrites outside of me. I started with hypocrisy in me. It was personal. So where is that in me? Where is the believer in me? Where is the Muslim in me? I started with that kind of focus. And all praise is due to Allah. It, it, it has been very beneficial to me. al fala say, I seek refuge, security with the Rabb of the daybreak, the dawn. A gradual process of being able to see better. Isn't this what guidance is for? Guidance comes to help us to see better. To help us, and I, I made a note, guidance comes 
And it's not rocket science, my brothers, and don't let nobody trip you up with some doo BS. Edinu Ma'amala, the religion is in the transaction. I'm a work. Whatever the work of our life, and the life, our life is a life of relationships. So we see our relationship, we see our life in our transactions, in our interacting with one another. That's, look, that's more important than me reciting Quran to you and you don't understand a word I'm saying to you, but you know, it's sooner, brother, it's sooner. Oh man, listen, I want to know so I can do. That, that's, that's the issue. I want to know better so I can do better, brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah. So, this is Muhammad, the deen, Ed Deen, the Deen, Mu'amala, is in the work, in the transaction. And again, we're talking, uh, the, the title is Pay Attention. And this is God's command to us, to pay attention, to be observant. Further it goes, Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak to dawn from the potential harm and mischief of the created world. I said potential, I'm, I'm, I'm digressing from the, the, the translation and sharing with you insights, inshallah. The creation, we know the creation is created good by God, but everything has its kada, you know, it has its possibility for good or harm based upon the utility. I went to church last Sunday with my sister and the pastor related, <laughs> the pastor related uh, an event in his childhood around the same age that I was when I experienced the same exact thing. A little different, I took a fork and I stuck that fork in an electric socket. <laughs> And you know the rest. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you about it, <laughs> but I'll never forget it. And anybody that's experienced it, they will never forget their first experience with electricity running through their body, unintentionally. Now, that's not evil. I'm, I'm making a point. The misuse or the misunderstanding of what God has created, there's the potential, the understanding of the possibilities of God's creation and don't leave yourself out don't we should not leave ourselves out we're talking Tawheed also because I, 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 I'm so thankful to the brother man who spoke two weeks ago he was I was working I'm work, still working on this project of Tawheed and he, he gave it up and we and we, we're we're including this in our presentation that was universal, what we were talking, that experience. The past experienced it, I experienced it, other, other, maybe some of you have experienced it. The possibility, the potential for good or harm in the creation, the potential of that, we need to seek greater light, greater insight, greater understanding, so we won't harm ourselves unintentionally, but still by misusing our own selves, our family relationships, and we come into that, we will, will not get the benefit. So there's potential there that God is cautioning us and calling to us to call on your Lord, who is the Lord of bringing, I'm not going to blind you with, with insight, I'm going to gradually feed you so that you can understand, you can see, and you can give your attention without straining. Gradually. Also, the next speaks to a time wa min shari rasikin I advise you as well as I advise myself that 
we're in a time of gossip, a day of gossip. It says darkness, but the, the root of the word has to do with filth, uncleanliness, and abyss. Uh, one of my mentors expressed it in the terms of we all know about tooth decay and how it funks up the mouth, the mouth is all stinking. I knew a brother, may God have mercy on him, in Grand Paradise, a good man allowed his, his, his mouth to get to such a condition where it began to affect and poison his body and he died from, from his the decay in his mouth poisoning his body. <clears throat> it happens. But before it gets to a point of fatality, oh, as soon as I open up my mouth, or we open up our mouth, oh, unpleasantness, you know. You know, some of us experience it most of the time during Ramadan, you know, this that unpleasant odor that God says and showing you his sensitivity versus I. It's like it's like a perfume, a musk, a sweet smell to God. But you know, we, we try to try to um, keep our mouth rinsed out or whatever, you know. But I'm, 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 I'm working at <coughs> the clock, so let me continue. So the gossip it, it's 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 described in this definition as as an abyss, a cavity, an abyss. And it's it's uncleanness, filth. You see it everywhere. I don't have a TV, a TV. I have one, but it's in storage. But I'm in watching the television. And where I stay, they got all these channels, and I'm flipping the channels. I don't know what the menu is. And oh God, a bunch of breasts and what have you. what in the world? It's there. Don't you know we have Muslims? I was told about those overseas, but I mean, you know, I, I don't have to go way over there. I know we have issues, we're human, we have the same issues. Uh, some Muslims are addicted to pornography. The Christians make a big, you know, they, 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 they tell on, they, they, they express, this is an issue in our, in our Christian community. Pornography is an issue. This uncleanness, this, this, this seeing women females as sexual objects to be used in any kind of way. So this gossip is, a, is an issue. And the overall focus and attention that I, I'm, I'm moving with and moving into is relationships. Relation, how we relate. How we pay attention. Relationships. Uh, definition meaning, it's got a dual meaning. To relate means to describe or to recite or to rehearse. And we told to recite and rehearse, to say this words, these words of guidance from the Quran. God commands us to say, you know, to tell your relations. Relate also means to join, to associate, to connect. And I'll stop there. Because what we are invited to, my mentor, my main mentor, my mentor who I say, well, the blood of my blood, what is it, the bone of my bone, they, what they say in the front previous scripture, the, the followers were telling David, we're the, we're the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh, David. In other words, look, we are with you all the way, and, and, and especially those ways that are most essential, bone and blood. Our logic is with you. We, we, we reason the way you reason. Our sensitivities, our life sensitivities are with you. And I'm, I, I use mentor. You know, I'm, I'm becoming more familiar, thanks to Imam Wazdi Muhammad, about how words make people and how we talked about the society, the language context for our lives. 
And again, we go back to the Quran. This should be the context for our life, the pattern of Muhammad's life, prayers and peace be upon him. That should be the context for our life. We should connect with these in a way, in a real way. And how do we measure? Where the rubber meets the road. We measure it in our transactions and how we relate in every day in our life. Let's start with ourselves. I heard I was given a statistic. I don't I didn't bring it with me. But most people when they think, they think the same thing over and over every 24 hours they're thinking the same thoughts percentage wise every day the same thought most people we live in a land of uh, demographics and statistics and studies this is a very tally technical and scientific environment that we live in even if we're not in touch with it the people that I mentioned that get into our head and our hearts and they get into our pockets whether it's a few pennies or a whole lot they are very scientific. They study our makeup as human beings. What our interest is, you know, how fear and frustration can be used to stimulate <coughs> consumer co consumption, purchasing things, giving our attention, giving our sensitivities to things, fear of failure, fear of being successful. That, that, that's a big issue with Negroes, and, and not only Negroes, but Nelson Mandela said, my people, when he got out of jail, my people are not afraid of failure. They're afraid of success. Something was done to them. But a bigger situation was done to us as African Americans. And don't let anybody fool you. But both uh, we as African Americans and the brothers and sisters in Africa, we've got a lot of work to do to bring ourselves to our true humanity and get rid of these overlays of hypocrisy of covering up superficially the real us with stuff so we continue and we're getting to the point and this is min shari ghasiki nitha wa fab wa min sharin nafathati fil uq I seek refuge, security with God from this potential harm, this mischief that comes about. Now I read something, one translation said witchcraft. You know, it was translated like witchcraft, the, the spitting, the blowing on knots. How in the, in the world in the United States of America, 21st century, how in the world, it's just like me going up to Berry Farms, I don't know if they still call it Berry Farms, <laughs> and going in there with desert sandals and throw down it's minus 17 degrees in Washington, D.C. winter, you know, Tell his brother, you need to come to Muhammad. You need to come. And as soon as you say Muhammad, boy, you got trouble. But they, 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 they done peeped you already because you know you come in in a certain way that they see as, as, over there Islam, and the brothers and sisters practicing it over here. Okay, they like they like them Arabs over there, you know. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on that. That's not that's not an issue with me but I'm dealing with relationships. I love my brothers and sisters. She can be covered up, but she can hardly look over her face covering and look out into the world, but she's still my sister. But I, I, I have been, because of my mentoring, I have been made aware of strategy and Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned strategy. He mentioned other things. Uh, you know, when, if you're going to live in a land for a while, don't be a foreigner. Don't be foreign. I, I, I don't have the, 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 the Dalia references, but I've read it 
insubstantiated uh, Sunnah sunnin, uh, Hadith. You know, if you're going to live in a land for a while, don't make yourself a stranger. Talking about relationships, where the rubber meets the road, with transaction, tra being transactional. It's just like a mama inviting her children to a treat, but she fussing at them. We're going to go downtown, we're going to Baskin Robbins, and y'all going to get some ice cream. I mean, you know, wait, wait. <laughs> I don't get it. What, what, what is going on? What is Mama talking? It, it doesn't. It doesn't relate. And this blowing on knots. I looked the word up, Booker, and it has to do with uh, where is it? It has to do with relating. Yeah, there it is. Nodding, nodding, tying, holding, joining, a con con social contract like marriage. You, you know, tying the knot, <laughs> tying the knot, bringing things together. Also, it's connected with the center or focus or the chief attraction. So. There are those, even this description of those who practice in witchcraft or magic, you know, we, we more familiarly magic. Even those that practice magic, it's, it's, it's the ability, the art, and even science of being able to distract or divert to change the relationship with what the, the natural creation and myself relating to it and have you thinking that I've got some superpowers because you to, 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 you try and you try to, how did he do that? You know, now you see it, now you don't. <coughs> That's what happens to our paychecks. <laughs> now you see it, now you don't. <coughs> you know, and here the millionaires, you know, the power companies and all them people, they get their piece of it. And a lot of times, I, I, I had a spouse, and she was so, and it was a, it was a blessing too, because she took. I didn't have to worry about the bills and things being taken. But you know, it was she was so dramatic about we got to pay these bills. And I said, well, dog, I want a hamburger or something. Look, I, I work for that. I got to get me a coke or some, a hamburger, or some naked juice or something. It ain't all about me giving my money away to other folks. I know. Yeah, I used. To, the lights, yeah. You better turn them lights off. <laughs> you better make sure them lights are turned off if there ain't nobody in there. And it's gotten more serious with me, man. I, look, I, I'm, I'm not of a mind to be giving my resources to people that don't need it. And then, by the reverse, denying those that need my resources, denying them because I ain't got nothing to give them because I'm giving it to people that don't need my resources. What kind of mess is that? So th that was the point, the relationship. Rela if you don't get anything else, in, in this surah, here that, to know that we, we need to seek God's help and enlightenment, to, to have our perception raised to where we can see that there are those who are at our vital relationship. Our relationship with ourselves, first of all. Uh, they got black men, and I'm, I'm pushing against the clock. You know, I think this will, this will give an example of it. Whoopi Goldberg, when she first came out, she was doing one woman shows when I when I became aware of her, and she did this routine in her one woman sh woman show of a junkie. Now I'm not sure the, the, the name is not important. It might have been Alphonse or something, but Alphonse he was nodding, but Alphonse was brilliant. But Alphonse, in one of the points of his 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 his. His dialogue, his, his monologue, he says, oh, I self medicate to keep from killing somebody. <laughs> Black anger, especially with the men, anger that causes us to turn our frustration, of fear, anger, because of how the page that we're put on as black men in America, but we turn it against ourselves. 
We turn it against loved ones. I was on the air in Birmingham, Alabama, and a sister called in, and she, she, she still calls in, and she was saying how during the, you know, the segregation days, her husband came home and punched her. I don't know if he punched the children because he had had, an, a, he had had a situation where he was disrespected by white folks to get off the sidewalk or something or another. But he came home with that anger, not being able to do what he wanted to do, you know, with that offense. And he came home and it came out in his anger with his own family members. We see it all the time. And I recommend to you this book, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome by Dr. Jo Joy DeGruy. At the time, she may, it may still have the label Joy DeGruy Laurie. But she goes into scientific uh, scientific uh, insights. She's a social worker by profession. But one thing that jumped out at me, this, this description of cortisol, it's, it's, a, it's a chemical in the body. <coughs> and when this cortisol is, 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 is produced to help in the flight or fight response, when we become afraid of something, this chemical, amongst others, kicks in, and it shuts down any kind, any blood flow to the to the brain, the reasoning brain, and it gives it deals with the primitive brain, and it sends the blood flow to the extremities, the arms and the legs, so you can run or you can take care of your business, you know, keep whatever is on you off of you. So this description jumped out at me and I began to see barbershop scenarios, corner scenarios, street scenarios when I was in the streets, you know, when when a ham would go off and it was no bringing him back, you know, he, he had lost it, you know, and you, I don't care how close the relationship was, you could not reason with him once he got to that point and she explained it through the cortisol kicking in this flight. And she also described that this cortisol can be passed on from mother to child. And it can also become addictive. It can be produced when there's nothing to run from, there's nothing to fear. And, 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 and you, you, you see these scenarios in, in these relationships in our environment where we can't talk with one another. You know, we get to a certain emotional state where <coughs> reasoning is gone. There's no reasoning. I don't care what the argument is, what, not argument, but what the, 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 the information is, is that's presented that makes sense and is real, I'm not hearing it. Because I've, I've lost it, I've lost my reasoning. I'm in this cortisol mode, you know, I'm getting these chemicals that have shut me down as a rational human being, and I'm on, I'm on primitive, I'm in primitive mode, you know, I'm in, I'm in that hind brain, you know, that early brain where the man, you know, had to deal with them big animals and things. That's where I am. So paying attention, as we conclude this portion of the khutbah, paying attention is very important. And throughout the Quran, Allah gives us illustrations. Illustrations to call us to look at ourselves, look into ourselves, to see ourselves beyond this physical container. And look at how we're made up and the relationships. The scientist studies these systems in our bodies, you know, the brain system, the endocrine system, the, the, the digestive system, all of these systems and how they cooperate with one another. And yet we are, we're so out of order. And our body represents the, the, the most excellent expression of order. You know, this body and, 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 and that, that houses us, the real us, expresses uh, relating and, 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 and cooperation and that's what God wants for us. And I began to see in the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, there's in the prayer is telling you, well, look out, look, 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 look. Get your eyes up off the ground. Look out in the sky. Or listen to the reports that come from those that look at the sky. It's order there. There's no lacking. The, 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 the space is continually expanding. You can't find its limits and God is continually putting something in it. Continually expanding creation. 
every day, you know, just on and on. And note that the planets and these other things are not bumping into one another. Yeah, we get there's some of that. But by and large, when you look at the big picture, there's order. And there's plenty of room. Plenty of room. All praise is due to Allah. We'll stop there. Rabbana. Let us have pollution. Bad is it today, then. We have Lana Mina Don Karah in the Hantoa. Our Lord, let not our hearts deviate after you have guided us. You're the grant of mercy. You're the grant of bounty without measure. Amen. We seek Allah's help and we ask His forgiveness and we put our complete trust in Him. Again, uh, dear brothers and sisters, we concluding with the, the subject of paying attention, referencing Al Fala, the, the dawn, and uh, we conclude with Women Sharin Nef. The conclusion, Sadaf Allah, Allah the Mighty speaks the truth. Uh, we know that Iblis, before he became the Shaitan, Iblis was in disagreement with his Lord in terms of the new manager that God was bringing forward, the human being, the new manager. New management was, was coming. And uh, Iblis was not in agreement with this plane. And I oftentimes wondered, before my mentor, the man Wadi Muhammad, gave me some insights, gave us some insights, but I, I accepted them. Some, some accept, some don't. But for those that don't, they're not, they're not being mentored by him. So I accepted the idea that Iblis could not have challenged the God. But it's more instructive for us to see that as a potential in us, that our behavior can reflect that we're not in the reality of our reality as servants being created to serve Allah, Abdullah. Both jinn and men were designed to serve Allah. But God gives us the great benefit, blessing, and challenge of limited free will, the ability to make choices. And obviously, Iblis made a decision to not see God the way God had created him to see God. You know, any time I have come up and <laughs> say, well, I'm in disagreement. I, you, you put me on my feet. You, you, you breathe life into me. And now I'm in disagreement. You know, everything that I have, I got from you. You put me in charge. Look, I'm a jinn, but I'm among angels who don't disobey. Wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> and I'm in disagreement. Obviously, he didn't have the right picture of who he was dealing with. That's clear to me. I don't know. It's clear to me. He didn't have a right picture of God. And so it is. It's more instructive for us to see this potential in us, this relationship, to see ourselves first. Before we start all oh, that hypocrite, that brother mentioned a, a conversation. He, he met uh, Tariq, I think his name is. Maybe mentioned. Yeah, brother was asking, was a brother's blood allowed if he didn't give me what I wanted. I'm kind of, I'm kind of quickly he, he won't give me what I want so is his blood good, is his blood uh, acceptable for me to take <laughs> you know hey, just the idea of the language halal means permissible and acceptable 
Well, what does he mean? You know, God said that, you know, your honor is sacred, your blood is sacred. Well, he's going to ask the question, can I take his blood? What? Wait, 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 what's wrong with that picture? They're feeding off of the wrong kind of stuff, man. You know, calling it Islam. And we need to, look, just like in the nation of Islam, we didn't have, we had the sincerity, but we didn't have the technical, the technical of the religion. And there were things there that, that were off. But without reference of a great history of being Muslim, we stood up for the fact it's not Muslim, it's Muslim. You know, we stood up for certain things that we told and we accepted from our leadership and we believed it. And without reference, without Dalia, we stood. You know, we stood up and said, no, it's not that, it's this. So I'm not interested in researching it. But somewhere along the line, somebody decided it was going to be Islam and not Al-Islam. Well, God said Al-Islam, but we're going to just take the, the definite article off and call it Islam. Now, what's wrong with that picture? And so by habit, we become the, we come to say Islam this and Islam that. Instead of Al-Islam, and you see what we've got, because God says, you know, don't charge me, you know, with this Islam that you got, your Islam, you know, the benefit is to you, you know, so worship God, worship God, worship Allah, the way he says to worship, and if you come up short, and look at the dignity, hear, hear the pattern of our behavior as human beings and as, as, as followers of Al-Islam, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah. God's messenger. He says, do as much of it as you can. <laughs> wow, man. I love you, Lord, and I love mom. Do as much of it as you can. <laughs> it don't say, well, you know, cover it up, you know, uh, be a munafiq. While I'm pointing at hypocrites, I'm being hypocritical because I'm covering stuff up. No, 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 the word kafir, kafir, kafir. I'm covering up what God wants to be exposed and brought into the light. I'm covering it up. We have to challenge ourselves to make sure we, we accept all of what Muhammad brought. This is a sensitive subject, but I'm, I'm that kind of guy. There was a situation in Birmingham when I was imam, resident imam there uh, a lot of years ago. We had four brothers. It was only four of them. Four brothers made the decision that they were going to have more than one wife. I told you it was sensitive. <laughs> they were going to have more than one wife. And they decided the methodology that they were going to use, they were going to bogart it. You know, look, this is what I want. This is, that's the end of it. Case closed. You know finish, it's over, I'm getting a second wife. I had one sister come to me, Brother Michael. I'm only, only a man at certain times, so I wasn't in front of the roster, I wasn't on the roster, so she's Brother Michael. Yes, ma'am. The brothers need to get, the, she's talking about her husband now, the brothers need to get together and straighten my husband out. You know, you talking about giving him a good FOI whooping. Get his head right. <laughs> you need to straighten him out, Brother Michael. It's his sister. First of all, you know, this matter is personal. You have invited me into it. But it's really, it's, it's not a community matter as such. It's your, your, your marriage relationship. And it is permissible. Now, I don't agree with the way that it's going on. And I told some others that, you know. And if the sisters would say, okay, like one brother told me, you try a second wife. You try bringing a second one up in here. <laughs> I think because it's an attraction. It's, it's legal. It's like cigarettes. <laughs> the law says I, I can smoke if I want to. The law in Al-Islam says I can have a second wife if I want to. But you forget that oftentimes the caveat is forgotten because God is so merciful and so respectful of our humanity. But one is best if you would know. And it, it, to go on, didn't didn't browbeat us with it, you know. One is best if you would know. 
And these brothers found out that one, <laughs> believe me, I, I watched them going to bed health and, and circumstances that, you know how in the old days we, we hear somebody say something blasphemous around us as Christians, I'm scared of you, and we back up. <laughs> we back up off of them, you know. I'm scared of you. Somebody cuss and use God's name in vain. Huh? Huh? I'm scared of you. When I, I saw these brothers go through some changes, I said, boy, I don't want that. I, I, well, I wasn't like that within the world, man. I wasn't smart enough to have more than one woman in the world. One was enough for me. But that's there. And I heard Imam Worthy Muhammad say, well, that, that's going to be... In the natural, in our natural growth as Muslims, that's going to be inviting to many brothers. You know, it's, I, I, I reference it. Excuse me, brother, but this is just how I am. I reference it like a guy who needs a cocktail or something. You know, like like Alphonse, maybe even. You know, he needed something because the pressure of producing umma, the pressure of the kind of productivity and and the kind of thinking and the kind of conviction I got to bring out of myself to bring community establishment out of almost nothing. That's a big job. That's a big job. And I can see, I can see brother backing off. I can see myself, I've seen myself back up. But I saw myself also putting my head on the floor and begging God, you know, to help me to do more, be more productive to have the proper relationship with this knowledge. Because I want it where the rubber meets the road. I don't just want to be philosophizing in Al-Islam. I want to be actively, if, if it's just an a, a ayat, or a, a, a verse, or a, a small surah, I want to be able to relate it to my life, to improve it, and to relate it in such a way that my children and my grandchildren will see it better. And uh, like we used to say, in the, in the day, I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one. In the day, you remember them days? I'd rather see you, see, show me what you're working with. Show me what you're talking about, you know. Not all of this verbalization, you know. And this is what we have to do. Again, you know, God calls us to pay attention. And he calls us to be aware of relationships. We're, we're to be be merciful to ourselves. Let's start with ourselves. Be merciful to ourselves. And when we're dealing with our, our family members, uh, spouses, and, and children, it's not them. Most of the time, it's the world. It's stuff that we have picked up that we, like a virus, we spread to one another. You know, the Southern values of of not being selfish, wanting to share, a kind word, rather than this criticism and you know critiquing and all of this kind of stuff, you know, that's what God is calling us to, and it's described. He illustrates it. You know, He doesn't give us just abstract <coughs> ideas. He connects the abstract with real pictures of people performing day-to-day -day transactions with one another. He said, "Be like this. Don't be like that." Be like the prophets, don't be like those every day. It's very, very clear. But now the doing it is something else. I mean, the, the pictures are clear. The illustrations are clear. But putting it into practice, and when we fall short, don't make an excuse. I got enough on my plate, so I don't need your confession or how you falling short. I don't need that. <laughs> I got enough on my own plate. I used to be Catholic, so every now and then I'll... I'll express something, but it seems like I always express it around a brother that has a good sense of the dean, and he don't feed that. He calls me to the higher reality. Look, brother, it's a struggle. <laughs> you know, we got to strive, man. You know, we got to strive. We can't, we can't. You know, he, he don't even mention quit because he don't see that in my conversation. But he don't mention quit. It's just you know, hit them bumps in the road, and just just encouraging to press on, man. Look. God created us for his help. We're not doing this on our own. What he calls us to, he gives us ample help. And when we feel overburdened is something we've picked up on our own, he says, look, no burden bearer can bear the burden of another, and I don't burden you more than you have strength to bear. That's, look, God is not a liar. So, you know, start with that premise, you know, knowing God doesn't lie, God's promise is true. We have excellent help. 
clear guidance and it meets us wherever we start. However we come to God's guidance in the Quran and come to Prophet Muhammad, but we have to encourage ourselves and invite ourselves to see Muhammad in the context of the Quran first. Because I was told by a brother who I consider scholar, the enemy years, hundreds of years ago, uh, he saw that the Muslims were becoming weak in their reasoning ability and they began to uh, put the focus on the chain <laughs> of the presenters but not on the chain of the logic in terms of its connection with the Quran. So this report is from Abu Huraira, Wabab, on and on and on, but not on the chain of the logic in, in terms of it meeting the contextual truth of the Quran, because that's the measure, you know. The prophet told us that. If I present something to you that goes against this book, you reject it. Same for if somebody brings you Prophet Muhammad and he goes against how Allah describes his prophets and Muhammad, just like you know, you know, the Christians got a big problem. You know, David is the, the, the beloved of God, and they, a lot of these preachers they they hang all of their weaknesses on David, and so they do all kinds of stuff and justify it with David being the beloved of God and going against God in big ways. And same with, with Lot and so others, you know, stuff that the normal little believing man and woman wouldn't ever think about doing. They got prophets doing. And Muhammad, prayers and peace be upon him, has come to correct that picture that the prophet's character is consistent in the line of the prophets. The message is consistent and progressive in the line of the message. All praises due to Allah. And I thank you for your patient hearing. Uh, Inshallah, let's make dua for one another. <coughs> let's make dua for our family. Let's make dua for the human family. We didn't get into that, but this this Tawhi, you know, one God, one creation, one human family. And it's important to see, with Allah's help, how to utilize this creation in our creative abilities that God has given us to help make humanity better, starting with ourselves and our family. Rabbana afrit alayna sabran wa tawafani muslimi. Amen pour out on us patience, suffering, and constancy, and raise us to the completion of our covenant as Muslims, true human beings, I mean, time to serve. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah, ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على رسول الله حي على رسول الله حي على رسول الله حي على رسول الله قط قامت صلاة القط قامت الصلاة السوف الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
الله أكبر Right there in front of us. I just, I, it's amazing. I've been knowing him all this Islamic life. 39, 40, 41 years. And they're going to talk about the FOI. That's the FOI right there. You know what FOI means? It means the best. It means the fruit of Islam. And that's exactly what I am right now. And so I just want us, I just, I'm amazed, man. So, and, and I know, I know you, man, Abdullah is right there, who is right there with him. He's seen him. Ain't you amazed? Yes, indeed. I knew he was going to be good. All this time, man, he, was, he kept so quiet. So he's on. We're gonna make do out for him because inshallah, in the morning he's gonna he's gonna drive. He's gonna he's gonna drill a car today. And he's gonna take the journey. He's gonna drive on back down to South Alabama. He's gonna stop at different places and stuff like that. You know, and then we're so gonna keep it in our do eyes, right? And when he comes back, last day, <clears throat> uh, inshallah. I hope you all see the importance of why I have been having these different emails yes, indeed. come in front of us, right? It ain't because I don't want to be up there, but the prophet said, you're not a believer until you love for your brother, but you love for yourself. I mean, I, inshallah, I plan on being back up there. I hope I have something to say. But more importantly, I want us to see the, 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 the talent and, and the knowledge that's, that's among us, right? So we get a real appreciation for what we know, con no doubt in our mind. How lots of people watch out has blessed us. It, it, it can be five of us here, no matter. But Allah has blessed us with something, right? So, alhamdulillah, let's make dry for this brother. You see, ma'am, she travels back to the locale. And thank you all for coming. 
Appreciate you. We have an announcement for this. We have an announcement. Which had earlier. We have an announcement group. But we know next week, inshallah, we should be able to give you uh, the location and the time for the uh, Ilal Aqa. Uh, somebody already have it, then let me know. But uh, we're looking for the end to be on uh, I've got the video that's going to be on the 16th, which is Wednesday. Some people say the 15th, you really know for sure. But anyway, that's based on those who make it hard. Keep the people, keep the do-eyes for those who are right now making hard. They're they on their journey, they have started, but they have the precepts, the plan is to be, uh, be uh, make their hearts and make do-eyes for them. So it's a meeting, let's see, on Saturday, October 26th, 8 to 4 p.m., meeting of Muslim businesses in the construction industry. It's going to be at Montgomery, what's it going to be? I'm sorry. I'm going to put this on the bulletin board downstairs because it's not going to be.